The offset function lets us select a group of cells by indicating the distance to calculate a subtotal. Later on in the video, I'll show a use case where it really shines to target an interval of rows dynamically. Hi, I'm Michael and welcome to Office Nifty. This channel has many videos with quick tips and tutorials for using calc. I'll start with using the basic function and talking about the parameters that it uses. So the first parameter it wants is basically the anchor point. Here I'll choose cell B4 as the start of my table and then I'll press comma to go on to the next parameter. Here it's asking for rows and the parameter after that is columns and it basically is asking how many rows down and how many columns over should we move in order to select our cell. In my example I wanted to move down one row and then start with moving one column over. So now the last two parameters is asking for height and width. For now, I'll leave it as one and it's actually optional. So if I don't even put in a height or width and I simply enter in the first three parameters for offset, it gives me the value that I want. So far, so good. But now if I wanted to target a range of cells, basically from January through March, I would put in the values for the parameters of height and width. So since it's only a height of one row, I'll type that in. And then for the width, I want three columns. This lets me target cells C5 through E5. Now press enter. Now I got an error showing me value and this seems very alarming and got me scared the first time I tried this for myself. However, don't worry because this is to be expected. What's going on here is that I've told offset to give me a range of three cells. Now obviously it can't fit three cells in my selection here. There's actually nothing wrong with the function. And to prove that, I'll pair this with the sum function. So towards the beginning of my formula, type in sum with an open parenthesis. And at the end, I'll type in a closing parenthesis. Uh, now this looks a lot better. And it's essentially what I have in the cell above it in J5. It's both 350 units. And I'll verify this subtotal by selecting the three cells. And when we look at the status bar, it shows me the average count and sum of my selection. So 350 is what I see and it matches my formula. Now I try to get working on the second quarter and the formula will be pretty much the same. Except as you can guess, the offset would be slightly different. For my anchor point of B4, now I need to move down one row but no longer just one column over, but I want to move four columns over to start at April. And then for height and width, again, I want a dimension of just one row high and three columns over. So here we go. And if you were wondering, we can use negative values for the rows and columns. This would just tell it to move either up a certain amount of rows or to the left a certain amount of columns, depending on the value you use. All right, now that we've covered the basic usage of the function, let's get to the meat of this. So far, I could have gotten subtotals by just using the sum function without the offset. And the reason is I'm selecting a range of cells that are all next to each other. So if I simply use the sum function, I could just click and drag to select the cells that I want in my range and I get the same exact value. With offset, we're able to select cells or ranges that are not necessarily next to each other. So let's take a look at what I have in the formula for K5. Here I do have an anchor point. Now for the rows, I'm using a certain formula in there that's using the row function. And then for moving over to the right and dimension of the selection is the same. So the only difference is I'm now using a more advanced way to tell it to target how far down to go. The row function just gives us a number value of the row for any cell that's in the function. So here I'm using C1 and it's colored red. This would give us essentially the number one 
and then I'm subtracting one from it. So here it's actually zero, I'm multiplying that by two, which is also zero. So really it just gives me a plus one, which is saying go down one row. So in that scenario, it's going to give me the same as this formula where I have one row down and then four columns over. Now let's see what happens if I copy the formula down. So here in K6, the formula is the same, but we see it's now targeting row C2 for the calculation, which here would give us a value of 2. Subtracting 1 is 1. Multiply that by 2 becomes 2, and then I'm adding 1 to that, which is 3. Now it sounds very convoluted, but basically it's saying, hey, let's now move down by 3 rows. And so to show that, now I've selected three rows down from the previous selection and we see the subtotal is 9,375. So essentially what I've done was I've targeted these two range of cells and also this one as well which is a subtotal of 7,882. Typically, when we use the old-fashioned way of just the sum formula, there's no way that we can select three distinct ranges within a selection. But by using offset, I'm able to do that. Now, this would make a lot of sense if your report or your table had spaces in between. So for example, if I had some white space between my rows, we can set our offset function to choose every other row and that would make sense. Then when I'm calculating a subtotal, I could just use the same offset function all the way down the column without having to use sum by itself and then selecting each range of cells individually. So I'll include the formulas I used in the video description below and I'm curious as to what people might use offset function for. Feel free to comment below with your use case or ask any question you may have. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and as always, stay nifty.